Hello and welcome to an in-depth guide to improving as crypto made for new and existing crypto mains. Timestamps are listed in the description below in case you'd like to skip to a specific time and if you'd like to see crypto gameplay I stream on Twitch and the link will be also in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Tadrian Park was introduced back in Season 3 as Crypto, the surveillance expert, and hacked his way into the Apex games to find out who framed him for the murder of his foster sister Mila, who is still alive and in hiding. Crypto enters the Legends roster with his surveillance drone as his tactical, Neuralink as his passive and his ultimate drone EMP. As his abilities are reliant on his drone, it is important that your aim and shooting skills are up to scratch, otherwise you will be seeing the lobby screen more often. His first ability is his tactical, the surveillance drone, which can be deployed by pressing Q on PC, L1 on PlayStation or LB on Xbox and can be flown within a 200m radius between you and the drone. Whilst in drone view, there is a bar at the bottom to indicate how far you are away from the drone and once you've hit the 200m mark, the screen will become fuzzy like it's losing connection and it can no longer go further unless you move closer. You can move away from the drone for an extra 40 meters and when it hits 240 meters it will be recalled. Piloting the drone is fairly simple, it moves to the direction you are facing and can quickly ascend by pressing your jump button or quickly descend by pressing your crouch button. It also has two modes level and direct. Level moves the drone horizontally which is good for surveying and direct is moving to the direction you are facing. The introduction of Season 6 has increased the drone's health from 30 to 60, but the hitbox has increased from the cube edge length of 16 to 24, which makes it easier to hit. If the drone gets hit, you'll know by looking at its health bar on the bottom left and you can reset its health by recalling it. If it's been destroyed, it has a cooldown of 40 seconds. The drone can open doors, supply bins and pick up teammates' banners and with each action a sound is made. Okay. I let you know what I see. Beginning ring countdown. Jungjin Charyo, check your map. I revealed the next ring. In addition to season 6 changes, the drone can instantly scan survey beacons compared to the 7 seconds that Pathfinder, Bloodhound, and Crypto himself takes to scan the beacon. The drone can instantly revive teammates using regular or mobile respawn beacons. With the recent aftermarket event, Vaults can now be opened with the drone as long as you have the vault key in your inventory. In drone view, you'll be able to check the champion or kill leader banners which contains Crypto's icons which are placed all around the map to see if there are nearby squads in the area. The banners show squads around Crypto, not the drone or banners itself, which a few people have mistaken for, and the radius for when squads are in the area is 200 meters from Crypto. You'll be able to ping banners no matter how far they are, which makes cryptos say a voice line depending on how many squads there are in the area, and if there are 4 squads or more, crypto will say that there are a lot of squads nearby, so you have to communicate this through voice chat or the ping system. When using the drone, it automatically reloads each gun and will display a notification on the left side of your screen. Reloading in drone view takes the same time as reloading normally except for the Mastiff as it would reload instantly no matter how many shells are needed to reload it fully. I often see cryptos waiting for the recall animation to close before they start moving. You can save a bit of time by hitting your recall button and then pressing exit. Next up is his passive, Neuralink, which is tied to his tactical which allows the drone to detect and highlight permanently within a 30 meter radius of the direction it's facing unless the enemies move, traps disappear or the drone is shot down. Enemies, doors, supply bins and specifically Octane's jump pad, caustic gas traps, Watson fences and pylon and ramparts, walls and shield are all detected. The drone does not detect enemies through Bangalore smoke, caustic gas or Gibraltar's bubble. Your teammates and yourself will be able to identify enemy whereabouts as the drone makes a sound when it detects an enemy. There is an indicator just above the EMP symbol telling you how close you have to be before the drone can detect the enemy. You can ping items, doors, traps, enemies or banners within the drone which crypto relays the message to your teammates. And lastly his ultimate ability, drone EMP. It has a cooldown of 3 minutes and takes a few seconds to charge up before unleashing its pulse from the drone, removing 50 HP which equals to 2 bars from worn or player drop shields and slows enemies for 2 seconds. 
the enemy and Crypto himself are affected by the EMP and slowed state, however teammates are only slowed. The EMP has a radius of 30 meters just like the Neuralink scan and damages or destroys Lifeline's heal drone, Octane's jump pad, Caustic inactive gas traps, Watson fences and pylon, Gibraltar's dome, Rampart's walls and disables Sheila for 15 seconds. The EMP goes through walls and buildings, so even if you cannot see traps, enemies, teammates or yourself, if they are in the blast radius, they will be affected. You can activate the EMP whilst in or out of the drone, and with the new 1.48 update, the bug when Crypto is unable to take out his weapons for 5 seconds after EMPing out of his drone has been fixed. Now let's talk in-game play. As a recon legend, it's your job to scout, as you can provide more information compared to other recon legends. Cryptos are known for being in their drone for too long, so once deployed, it's important to check for banners for squads nearby, scout ahead, or around the area for enemies using the least amount of time in the drone as possible. Using crypto properly, you can initiate or disengage fights. Positioning is key as using your drone leaves you vulnerable so it's important to place yourself in a safe area before taking out the drone. Don't be picky with your cover as you shouldn't be on your drone for more than 5 to 10 seconds unless you have a reason to. Make sure that you are able to get into the fight quickly after spotting enemies or activating the EMP as the gunfight will be a 2v3 so Crypto does pair well with Wraith, Pathfinder or Octane for their ability to move quicker. However, their ultimates should not be used for the sole purpose for a Crypto to move from one place to another, therefore it's crucial that you position yourself as close as possible but safe from enemy fire. When deploying your drone, you should have a few seconds during the transition animation to move so you do not have to run to cover and then deploy your drone saving yourself a few seconds. Identify your cover, slide into it and before or during mid slide, deploy your drone. You can also slide and then crouch before the transition animation ends so Crypto is permanently crouched when piloting making him less visible. You should be flying the drone close to the ground as it is harder for enemies to shoot out than in the air. Objects or buildings can be used as protection from gunfire to allow your drone to reposition or prepare the MP for those crucial few seconds. This can be vital as enemies may be focused in the shooting the drone as they do not want to be detected or be EMP'd allowing your teammates time to close in on them making it a viable distraction technique. However some situations may require you to fly high up in the air to find out where the enemies are and it's your call to find out the best way to approach them. You can also spot other enemies pushing towards the gunfire giving your teammates time to replan the attack. Your drone can be quite loud, therefore use it to your advantage when you are pushing to a building or hill so you can somewhat mask yourself or your teammates footsteps. The drone can glide up stairs, hills and past objects without you necessarily moving your joystick or WASD keys making it harder for it to be destroyed. The drone can be used as bait to lure enemies out of cover or can be used to lure other teams to fight each other as they could be chasing the drone or trying to shoot it out attracting others to the area in the process. Your drone does not take damage when in the ring so you'll be able to scan beacons, revive teammates, scan or EMP out of the ring. When scouting outside the ring, the glow around the drone appears orange for the enemies so it can be used as camouflage to detect latecomers out of the ring. Use the drone like CCTV by leaving it in the corners of rooms, entrances, exits or pathways facing areas you suspect enemies to flank or run through in case of late rotations or rats which gives yourself and your teammates time to react if they are poking enemies or pushing. In some cases, if the enemy hears your drone inside a building or bunker, they may be forced to reposition elsewhere so your drone is essentially acting like the fourth recon member. Scout ahead of choke points so you have options to push through if clear, rotate somewhere else or push back in case of gatekeepers. This tip is more useful if you do not have a bloodhound. It is important to notify your teammates that your EMP is ready so when you are about to fight they can time their movements to move in after the EMP so that they are not affected by the 2 second slow movement. The EMP does slow down the enemy and your teammates ability to move in aim down sights so it could be a major factor as to who gets down first. 
The drone has its own audio system, so use it to find out where the gunfight or footsteps are to maximize your EMP. Your EMP is useless if you and your teammates do not follow up with the intent of challenging the enemy unless the situation changes like third parties or if your teammates get knocked, so you should communicate with your team what the plan of action is. And do not EMP when yourself or the rest of your squad are far away from the fight as the enemy will have plenty of time to heal back up and if they are well coordinated they can set up an ambush as you're running towards them. You can strategically place your drones in areas where enemies cannot shoot it out like for example if a team is holding down the building so you can time the EMP and move in with your teammates for a 3v3 leaving the enemies no time to react. You can use the EMP to level up your EVO shield so you do not necessarily have to third party or be in the fight to level up your shield. In ranked, EMP counts as an assist so even if you're not in the front lines fighting you'll be able to get an assist unless another enemy team's down them first. Do not be afraid to EMP yourself and your teammates. Depending on the situation, self EMP could be the deciding factor of whether you survive the next fight. You may have just finished the fight and you're all healing up, but before you guys are fully healed, another team comes to third party, so self EMP could stop a team from pushing as they may want to shield up, giving yourself and your teammates time to heal or run away. If you have two bars or no shields left, then self EMP is an option as you can immediately start shielding with a cell or battery so by the time the EMP ends you may have full shield to fight. Continue to move the drone mid EMP as enemies can shoot it down before it is activated so I tend to start it early reducing the chances of it being destroyed mid EMP and reducing the chances of enemies running out of the EMP zone. During the EMP, the drone can still interact with objects like picking up banners so it can be used as a distraction technique. A way to tell if you're still in the EMP radius is by looking around your screen for the extra EMP lines in or out of the drone or doing a 180 looking towards yourself to see how far you have to move pre or mid EMP. EMPing a team can cause them to panic by staying inside the building, running away and separating if they are uncoordinated leading to easy pickings. After or during the EMP, make sure your drone is facing above them or behind them within the 30 meter radius so it can permanently detect enemy movement. Leaving your drone to permanently scan will cause the enemy team to make a decision whether to shoot out your drone or shoot your two mates first. If they decide to shoot your two mates, then the drone will continue to scan their movements allowing your team to anticipate enemies by preparing to fire or move around. Shooting the drone will allow your teams to push up with ease. EMPing enemies will show where they are with a shield damage indicator and you can hear if the shield breaks so you can inform your teammates how many legends there are in the area or if shields have been broken. It's important to note that if there are no shield damage indicators but there are enemies in the area then it's likely there could be more than one enemy that has no shield. Quickly place your drone in the air to highlight enemies if you're pushing or third partying and if they are fighting just by the ring, place it in the ring as the enemy sees the drone's glow as orange which camouflages with the ring making it harder to detect. Once you finish the fight and you feel that it's safe, check the nearest champion banner with your drone to see how many squads are nearby. Relay the message to your teammates so they do not loot 24-7 or they might heal as a priority first as all gunfire will attract teams to third party so this makes sure you're prepared for the next fight. Have you checked the champion banner for one or more squads but cannot find teams in the area? Fly high and look down to see if you spot anyone but only pilot for a few seconds and keep moving with your squad. Use jump button to ascend and look down to save time. Place your drone to hug the wall if enemies are on height to force them to reposition if they want to shoot it out to prevent an EMP or leave themselves exposed when on the ledge looking for it, allowing your squad to get someone low or be knocked. When in drone view, you have to be facing the interface of survey beacons to scan, otherwise scanning anywhere but at the front of the beacon will still play a sound but will not work. You can just check the map till it changes. Important to drone and ping banners for when squads are nearby, when you move to a near area or when you hear shooting to check whether you want to take the fight or not. Place your drone high up to avoid being shot down and use it as a tripwire to give yourself time to react or set up an ambush. This is also useful if your teammate is downed and you can fake a revive to force your enemies to push and you do not have to rely on their footsteps giving your time to prepare and shoot them. 
If you are being chased by a team, you can hold your tactical button to bring your drone out without going into drone view. So with timing, you can hold your Q and face your drone in the enemy's direction so you can trap them with the MP and be able to run out of the EMP zone giving you extra time to escape or stop them from chasing. Is the location looted? Deploy your drone to see if they are still in the area. If they are, communicate with your teammates and prepare to fight. Always look out for mobile respawn beacons, whether you have one on you or another team is about to use it because you are able to use them instantly and stealing respawn beacons when the enemy is currently using it is satisfying. If you have stayed back because you are in the drone for too long and your teammates are downed or close to being downed, you have the option to fight or give yourself the extra time to run away as your chances of surviving a 2v3 or 1v3 may be slim so being able to pick up your teammates banners may be the next best thing as you can reset and give your team another chance, especially if you are playing ranked. Sometimes enemies camp banners so it's important to move the drone from a direction where you're not located as enemies may chase after you assuming you've used the drone from that direction and fly as low as possible so they cannot see or hear your drone until the last second. As Crypto you're normally the second or last legend to arrive to a fight so it's encouraged to have a sniper or long range gun as a secondary so you're able to stay in the same position and shoot to poke enemies or cover teammates however this makes Crypto players less aggressive. It may suit your playstyle playing more reserve, but sniping as crypto will draw attention to your location and if you do miss your shots it gives the team you're fighting time to heal and prepare for the 2v3 if you plan to continue sniping. I consider myself to be an aggressive crypto because I prefer being face to face against my enemies with my teammates as my gun skill and MP gives us the better fighting chance. Crypto is more usable in ranked as he can now scan beacons instantly with the drone for early map rotations. An example where using the drone is useful is if there are a lot of squads around the area and your team is defending a building but want to know where the next ring is before rotating. This means that your Bloodhound or Pathfinder cannot be down during the scanning animation and you do not have to wait for the next ring to close before finding out the next ring location. You can also ask your teammates to swap evo shields if you are sniping to poke enemies or using the EMP to keep an eye on ultimate accelerants. With communication your teammates can throw arc stars on the drone and be flown into enemies which is another tactic used to initiate fights however it comes with practice. Go line it up. Go 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 Hello. Oh, he's dead! He's so dead! We got him! Yes! Hello. Oh, he's dead! He's so dead! We got him! No! <laughs> the meta of Wraith Portal, Revenant Death Totem, and Crypto EMP was nerfed, however, it's still usable. Comms are necessary to time the EMP and Portal so none of your teammates are affected. If you come across a drone EMP and you're quick enough, you can drop your armor to stop the Crypto farming and leveling up his Evo armor. Your armor still loses 2 bars but it's better knowing that you're not helping Crypto level up his EVO shield. A way your EMP can be countered is by Wraith timing her Void Q or Octane using his stim immediately after EMP or another Crypto using his EMP before yours so if you do see a drone communicate with your teammates to shoot it down or you'll be forced to EMP before the other Crypto does. With the aftermarket update, Mirage receive a little buff as Bloodhound scans and Crypto drones detect all Mirage decoys with the inability to single out the real Mirage. A way to counter this is by tracking his emitter light as he activates his ultimate, checking if a Mirage has a secondary weapon on his back as all decoys do not have one, or listening to his footsteps since the real Mirage only has footsteps audio. The drone also detects teammate Mirage decoys which seems to be a bug and should be fixed in the upcoming updates. If you take damage whilst in drone view, react quickly to the situation and warn your teammates. It's hard to know if you're safe so ask the teammate to cover you. However, if you take damage in the ring, you'll not be taken out of drone view. I have listed a few crypto mains in the description that you can watch on Twitch including myself and have added the platforms they play on. I would like to give a massive congratulations to Matchin who has recently become the first crypto to achieve 50,000 kills. I hope that this in-depth guide has improved your ability to play crypto in pubs and ranked. If I said something incorrectly or missed out something please let me and others know in the comments below. That's all for this video, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.